Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Today we are talking about habits. Sam would like to stop smoking, but he's a bit discouraged after previous failures. So if you'd like to know what to do to succeed with quitting a habit that no longer suits you, then you definitely need to stay tuned. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And it's You've Got Five Options. Yes, and we are recording today about quitting smoking. Yes. Okay, so I guess this time I am the one who is reading the challenge. So here it goes. The time has come and I am ready to quit smoking. The challenge is that I have tried quitting before and I wasn't successful. I tried going cold turkey. I have tried using Nicorette. And after a while, I was just starting to smoke again. I guess also due to that, I don't believe I can actually do it anymore. What can I do to quit for good? And now we are moving to step three. It's all in your head. Time for some solid mental cleanup. And in this step, we are going to look into that reason for you to quit smoking. That's uh, one thing. And we are going to do some exercises to get that reason to be positively formulated and believable. And then we are also going to go into, into issues such as negative self-talk and limiting beliefs. These are the two uh, aspects we are going to get here. So let's take that reason. So for example, if you have said, okay, I just want to quit smoking because I don't want to have a cancer. We started to talk about it a little bit. If you start saying something like that, you immediately get negative emotions and you are actually in a vulnerable time. You are in a time when you are going to expose yourself for withdrawal syndromes. You are going to actually go through emotional difficult time. You don't want to add more negative emotions to where you already are. And therefore, we are offering to you a way to formulate it in a positive but still believable manner. So, for example, if you said, I want to quit because I don't want to get a cancer, you are going to make it much better for yourself if you're going to say, I want to quit because I want to be healthy. That's very important. I want to be healthy and strong because there is a universal law that what we put our focus to, that's what's going to happen. Just even try to repeat, I don't want to have a cancer. I don't want to have a cancer. You just feel bad. And if you say, I want to be strong and healthy, I want to be strong and healthy, you start building up a positive emotion around. Yeah, I totally agree. There is this funny uh, experiment. Now I will tell you, Marta, don't think about pink elephant. What are you thinking about right now? Yeah, it's like a pink elephant is immediately in my head. Yeah, right. So I, I think that it, this is really important. And I think that uh, for this challenge, definitely very important. But just in general, we are really having a lot of negative um, self-talk, you know, uh, we formulate a lot of things in a negative manner. And I think that that do doesn't really serve us at all. No, it doesn't serve us at all. And there is a, a lot of, you know, literature about that already now, but with your reason nail it down and if you want to take it even step further instead of saying like i want to formulate it as if you already had it if you can say it i am strong and healthy you are already building it up into your life you are building your new identity your new way of doing it but as an example if your reason was because i don't want to smell bad you could reformulate it i want to smell good or I want to have beautiful smell around me. The more positive, the more believable, and the more as if I already have it, I smell good. I smell beautifully. The more you can build up on it, the easier it's going to be for you to actually get it, invite it into your life. So that's basically the principle behind it. 
try to go from a negative to a positive way of formulating your reason. And the more you're going to repeat it, uh, I think, Anna, you have some uh, very nice ways of building that uh, new positive affirmation into your life. It's not about smoking, of course, but if you could give a couple of examples when you want to reprogram your brain and you want to change a message that you have had, I have seen you sticking some small notes on your computer. I ca I have seen you changing your password into something that you want to invite to your life. I have uh, seen you using scripting so that when you want to change some of the things that no longer serves you, you actually have like an army of the things that you do uh, in order to invite it to your life. So yeah, but actually, this is true. Well, first of all, I definitely am trying. Oh, and now I would actually fall in my own trap, guys. Wait a moment. I am using positive affirmations. I wanted to say I'm trying to avoid mm -hmm. negative. You see, ex this is difficult because somehow we humans are like wired to to say, you know, I don't want to. We are very good at pointing out what we don't want to what we are afraid of. So I don't want to get cancer. I am afraid that I will not gonna make it. I can't do that or something like this. So instead of doing that, you're just changing it. For instance, um, I don't want to get cancer. Perfect example. I want to be healthy. This already takes this whole negative load. So I do really watch my language. And th then another thing is that, and this is actually something that I know a lot of people are doing. I always change my password for my computers to things that I want to happen. For instance, okay, I cannot say it because now people will be breaking to my emails. Damn. But yes, there is something. Oh, shit. How many passwords do I have to change now? <gasps> well, anyway, anyway. I will manage before we will release this uh, this this show this episode. But uh, yeah, uh, it really works because then when you repeat something, you type something over and over again, somehow it sticks subconsciously to your head. So it works. But it, with the language, it's really difficult because we are so much used to saying "I don't," "I don't want," "I can't." It's it's quite a quite a job. But once you start to do it, it's getting easier. It's getting better. So the whole thing is that to reformulate your uh, reason into something that is positively formulated and believable, you have to believe it. So, for example, if you don't feel now that you are strong and healthy, if you are saying this and it doesn't resonate with you, you can start with I'm learning to be strong and healthy. I am open to being strong and healthy. So you have to formulate it in a way that really resonates with you. When you have formulated in that way that resonates with you, then you have to repeat it over and over again. Write it down, stick it to your computer, stick it to your mirror, uh, make a vision board. The, um, there are so many good ways that you can do it. And uh, you will find some of those ways, of course, in our written version of the challenge. And the same principles apply to what Anna already mentioned. Some of that negative talk, negative self-talk and limiting beliefs. And good examples you, Anna, already gave some are, I can't make it. I am too weak to make it. I am a smoker. That's actually an excellent example of building into your subconsciousness uh, something that will make it really difficult for you to stop smoking. Yeah, if because it's become, it becomes the part of your identity, actually. Yeah, and that's even more deeply rooted when it's a part of your identity. But when you have those things like, I can't make it, I'm too weak, try to rebuild that to I'm learning how to be strong if you can't make that bridge from I'm weak to I'm strong. I'm learning to be strong. So what you need to do here when it comes to that negative self-talk is you really have to mindfully listen to yourself. You have to catch yourself repeating those uh, messages. You know, I figured that even 10 years after I quit smoking, I was still telling myself very frequently that I'm a smoker because once a smoker, always a smoker. So I actually caught myself 10 years after I haven't had even one single smoke, repeating that to myself over and over and over again. And, you know, I when I was writing this um, article uh, as a preparation for that podcast, I found myself like, am I a smoker? If I continue saying that, I will definitely believe it. 
I will definitely continue being a smoker. But if I change that identity into something as simple as I am Marta, if I stop telling myself over and over, I am a smoker and once a smoker, always a smoker, I just, you know, started catching myself on trying when I, when thinking this and saying that to myself, I catch myself and immediately tell myself, no, nope, I am Marta. And now already, because it's been a couple of weeks since I wrote this article, I don't say to myself any longer, I'm a smoker. I just tell myself I'm Marta. And it's amazing. I don't feel it's so liberating. Revelation. I have been telling this to myself for a decade over that I'm a smoker and I feel so liberated. I feel now I never have to smoke again. It's up to me. We are going to go for step four, game plan. Figure out what you are going to do instead. So do you remember in the first step, we ask you to identify all those moments uh, when you smoke, uh, all the reasons why uh, you reach out for a cigarette and now we are going to take that list and we are going to go one by one and we are going to identify what you're going to do instead. Yeah, actually here I do have an experience because there was this one crazy time when I was actually challenged uh, to quit smoking and I made a bet with my friends that I will uh, not smoke for a week. And I have managed, but I think the most difficult part of it was actually what to do in those moments when I actually normally smoke. So I remember the first day uh, when I made the bet and I was going to university. And of course, naturally, I wanted just to pull the cigarette and smoke it on the way to the bus stop. And I was like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? It was small thing, but that was actually the most annoying parts, you know, when you have this habit of, of doing this while doing something else. So then, of course, every break at university was a torture because I was always going for a cigarette. Then um, also when I was having coffee, it was a torture. I couldn't smoke because I didn't have a replacement. I haven't thought thought about it. It was a bet. It was a week. It was terrible. If I would figure out what to do instead, probably that would be way easier for me. But it was I was just taken totally by surprise. And I think that many people who are um, deciding to quit spoke, uh, smoking, especially the spontaneous thought like I'm quitting today just now. I think they are not prepared what to do because it's just like simple things. What will I do with my hands? Like I always have something in my hands or the habit of, you know, like spending your break in a way. So I think that uh, this is an extremely important step. So you will have to be creative here mm -hmm. because you have to find out those things that will actually work for you. Some people, they can just if, if it's really annoying the first days, you can get and you need something for your hands. You can, you know, take your mobile and use your mobile while you're waiting. That could be one example. You can, I don't know, get a chewing gum. You just have to go through your list, identify all those moments and simply allow yourself to be creative and note down if there is anything that could uh, replace. But of course, it has several layers because what you're going to do with your hands is just one layer, right? There is, of course, a layer also of what you're going to do when you are stressed. Because if it was your way to manage the stress and deal with any kind of negative, difficult emotions, do you even have a way to deal with it? So there also comes some more of those um, even more challenging situations. Because I guess if you're highly motivated for quitting smoking, uh, and you're feeling fine, it's going to be reasonably easy to not do it. But when that crappy day comes, when something bad happens, when you're really stressed, when you feel really, you know, blue or whatever, what are you going to do instead? Yeah, actually, I think those are from what I remember from the stories of my friends who are quitting two breaking points when you actually come back to your addiction is one when something happens when you are really really stressed or angry or sad or heartbroken whatever that is and then of course you are just like yeah I don't care I will just smoke 
the second thing is the second situation it's actually even more interesting this is many times when you are already a couple of weeks or months after quitting and you feel comfortable enough that you yeah i i just quit so then you go out and maybe you have a beer and that was your pattern back in the day you were socializing through cigarette and then you just yeah i'll just smoke one you know it's like i'm 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 already not 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 smoking you know i can do it and then i saw people coming back straight away to the addiction so um i think those are those two situations when you were usually smoking either for stress release or for relaxation and it's really really tricky you can really fall easily if you don't have a um, well thought out replacement i think Yeah, it's a really, really good point. And it's touching upon also the situation to look into your lessons learned. Because we know, Sam, you have tried to quit before and you were coming back to your addiction. So that's also very important to identify why have you failed. So if you look into why have you failed, maybe it was because you thought you are already out of addiction and you are just going out with your friends and you're just going to have a cigarette with your beer or whatever in a social situation. And then you go back to the habit of uh, smoking and addiction identify and you know like really think what you have learned from it so for all those of you who have failed before really look into your lessons learned because there is invaluable information in those traps in those moments when you have actually failed this is where you really have to have a goddamn good plan uh, what you're gonna do in this situation Exactly. You have to pinpoint and exactly those moments, like what has happened that I started. And um, yeah, it, sorry, I, it's just, yeah, it's just brilliant. I'm sorry, I had to say it, Marta. Well, well, well done. Good job. Amen. Fifth bump. Yeah, so basically, this is a really tricky moment, you know, this time when you when you actually failed before, or when you feel comfortable enough, you think you have it all under control, or you are completely out of your, uh, you know, good spirit, you're angry, you're stressed, and so on, you really have to figure out what you're gonna do. Are you gonna, you know, call your friend? to talk about your negative emotions? Do you even have a way to deal with your negative emotions? And that's where uh, we easily can fall into the trap of uh, changing one addiction into another addiction. So allow yourself some time to spend with yourself to identify what will work for you. Because everyone has to figure it out for themselves. There is no like a recipe we can give you uh, here. There is something that you have to figure out for yourself and that will resonate with you. Yes. So uh, that was uh, step number four. And now we are moving to the last step. Shift into your new non-smoking self. That's actually a very important uh, part. And this is the part that we have already discussed a little bit before, your identity. And I think that this is actually the part that many people who are trying to quit smoking and are failing are never even getting into. I think this is a part that is really neglected. And yeah. that's, uh, that's why I think it's, um, it's super important to talk about this. Yeah, so basically, you had to kind of like, you know, unlearn what you've learned, you had to figure out your new ways of coping with stuff. But now you are attacking that, you know, deeply rooted part of your identity. If you have been repeating a pattern for many years, and especially something like smoking, if you have built it into your identity, I'm a smoker, it actually also gives you like your place in life, a group you belong to, a group of smokers or it's like it becomes part of your life, part of your identity. You do it so frequently and for so many different reasons. You call yourself a smoker. So this is a very advanced level of reprogramming your brain. You have to find this new way of calling yourself not a smoker. So that's where I gave the example where I figure out something super simple. I just started to call myself a Marta, <laughs> you know, by my name. But you can... You just have to find this word or this name or something that will resonate with you. And yet again, remember, it should be something at least neutral. Like Marta is absolutely neutral. It's not something positive or negative. So it's just neutral. Just remember 
to have it positively formulated. And we hope that we have explained it well enough that it's our brain that focuses on a message. So that example that Anna gave you, don't think about a pink elephant. You are right the way having a pink. Don't you? Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, that's a very, very tricky one. I have to say, Marta, that you are very much on spot. And I think especially for the smokers, it's really difficult. Me being a smoker, um, and I call myself a smoker, mostly because I'm still smoking. It is it is maybe not a subculture, but you have some sort of a community, like when so many people have quit and you go out to smoke sometimes and many times you are alone, then you meet another person. Oh, wow, you're also a smoker. Yeah, I thought that we have extincted, you know, we are like dinosaurs or something. And then you strike a conversation straight away with that person. It's and especially now when smoking became so unpopular, actually, it's even like a, it's even a tighter community of smokers. It's really, really funny. And I think that uh, smokers are definitely spending their, especially breaks when you are studying or working, they are spending their breaks in a way they go for a cigarette and uh, meet with other smokers. And maybe normally you would not have a conversation with other people, but because you are a smoker, you just start to have a conversation with people that you don't even know. It is a very interesting part of, a, of, of, of in identity and personality. I have to say. So that's why I think uh, it's extremely important to try to convert yourself into something else, because especially with smoking, that that can be a challenge. Yeah, I totally believe. And in general, it's about believing. <laughs> yeah. So if you believe you're a smoker or if you believe you're a drinker or overeater or a sex addict or whatever was that pattern that you identified for yourself, if you believe it and you continue Saying that, it's going to be so difficult to stop being that. But if you feel it doesn't serve you, if you feel that you want to change it, you can help yourself by reprogramming your brain into a new belief. You have created that belief. You own it. You have repeated it over and over again. And you have all the power that you need to have to be able to stop doing that because you created it. You can uncreate it. You believed it. You can choose to have a new belief. It's all in your hands. It's all in your head. But I would say that when it comes to shifting into your new self, it's also about that part of scarcity and abundance. That's a very important concept because when you stop smoking and you very much concentrate on what you're lacking, what you're missing, it's like, oh, I really miss smoking. Oh, I can't smoke anymore and so on. If you concentrate on that, it's also producing all of that, you know, oh, it was so cool when I was smoking and I really miss that. And you concentrate on it and you keep yourself in that place of luck yeah, and you start music. to e idealize the whole face of your life when you were smoking it was so cool to sm i can totally relate to yeah. that so if you keep yourself in that place you actually keep that door open always you keep that door open to fall back and get uh, down that road again but if you choose to concentrate on what you actually do have instead it's going to be cooler, it's going to be nicer, it's going to produce positive things. So for example, instead of uh, concentrating on I can't smoke and it was so cool when I was smoking, you can choose to have a message of what you do have now. And what you do have is, for example, I have clean air around me to breathe in. I have nice smell around me. So you concentrate on all the things that you actually have only because you stopped smoking. You do gain something every time. For example, you gain the control. I have control over my life. There is not this tiny little thing that is controlling me and making me go out even when it's freaking freezing cold. I have freedom. I have control over myself. So that's one of those things that will help you create the feeling of abundance, create a feeling of, you know, what you do have, of the positivity around it. So that's really something that can help you, that can support you when you are uh, shifting 
from that uh, smoker identity to a non-smoker identity. Uh, yeah, but I think it's pretty typical, unfortunately, with us humans, we always focus on scarcity than the abundance. I think this can be really applied to absolutely any area in our life. I just had this example with, of course, you know, breakups. Sometimes we just end the relationship and it's not even it was not even a good relationship. But then we are like hanging on a thought of that person or relationship. I miss those moments. I miss that time and so on, so on. Instead of, for instance, saying I have so many new doors or possibilities open and we always tend to, I don't know how to call it, like self indulge ourselves in, in sadness. And, uh, you know, it's like idealizing the past and it's with smoking. It's the same with relationships. If it's even the same with, I don't know, losing job or changing something that happened or actually ex experiencing change. We many times just focus automatically of, on a lack, then on all the opportunities or all the all the things that, thanks to the fact that that thing is gone, are not now having uh, their way to our life. Yeah, so that's exactly that part that will help you transition to your new non-smoking or habit-free identity. That's all what we've had for you today. So it was a five steps process where we tell you to first go for a root cause analysis, meaning, you know, inner journey, like dig deep to find out why you have been smoking all this time. Step two, more inner journey, determine why do you really want to quit. Step three, it's all in your head. Time for some solid mental cleanup. This is where we were talking about creating new positive and believable beliefs instead of that negative self-talk. Step four, game plan. Figure out what you are going to do instead of smoking. And step five, shift into your new non-smoking self. All the good luck to you, Sam, and to all our listeners who would actually like to break a habit that no longer ser serves them. Yeah, so um, I think I would just like to say that I'm not sure what I would like to say. I wanted to say something about the fact that Sam, I believe in you, even if I'm a smoker. That's number one. The second thing was something about zombie apocalypse, but I lost it. <coughs> Where did that come from? So I will just pause on it. Then I also was thinking that maybe I should start to make my driving class uh, license. And I'm happy that Lasse was here with us today. There is always something positive and you always learn always. something new. Always, always. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.y-o-u-v-e-g-o-t-5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app. In our next episode, we are going to talk about persistent admirers. Is there a line between being romantic and creepy? Well, yes, there is, and we will tell you exactly where it lies. So join us in our next program. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.